I loved Abstract, but after watching it, I could immediately see why some people might not. It's a recurring elephant in the room when it comes to these sorts of episodes, and has been a hotly debated attribute of Adventure Time for a while now. I'm of course talking about Adventure Time's custom of resolving important and seemingly game-changing developments within a short time frame and having things sort of, but not really, return to the status quo. The episode Breezy probably continues to be the most contested episode, where people were put off by how few episodes it took for Finn to regain his arm. I also loved Breezy, and I've always personally viewed these episodes as far more powerful and interesting metaphorically. The external events are secondary to the more fascinating internal struggles the characters face, which are symbolized visually. Considering how many episodes into the series we already are, I think people should be well aware by now that Adventure Time's style of storytelling may often fly in the face of expectations, or pull atypical or oddly paced resolutions relative to other, let's say more normal, shows. Obviously, all this preamble is leading up to how in abstract, Jake reverts to his classic form by the end, making his new alien-esque form last for just a single episode before the quote-unquote problem is solved. I do understand how some people can be frustrated with this sort of resolution, even if they comprehend that the whole point was Jake's new form isn't necessarily a problem, and that Jake experienced a lot of character development throughout the episode. It's understandable that people may appreciate the themes explored in the episode, but still not have the plot and story pacing aligned to their preferred taste. And while I think that's a bit unfortunate, in the end, all it really comes down to is that people have different tastes. As I already mentioned, for me, this was an especially tasty episode. The resolution didn't take me too much by surprise, but what I didn't expect was for Finn's involvement to be so minimal. In Elements, he makes a heartfelt statement about how he loves his brother, and it seemed like the two might work together toward understanding Jake's condition. You and I can fix whatever this is together. Whenever. However, Jake goes at it solo, and it's Jermaine's help that allows him to envision himself differently. Which, quite honestly, I'm quite glad the other brother in the family gets to play a part and help out, and Jermaine's involvement in Jake's dream and orb makes a whole lot more sense now. Now, whether Abstract marks the last time we see Jake's true form, I don't think so, especially since all these new powers the alien form has were introduced this episode. But considering how the entire beginning of this review was discussing how Adventure Time's storytelling often defies expectations, it is possible Abstract is the conclusion to that plot point. I guess we'll see if the lore to the weird creature that impregnated Jake's dad will be explored in the remaining 16 episodes. Perhaps it, and thus Jake, have some relation to the Emissary from Beyond, and the event referred to as The Rising. Only time will tell. Well, with that especially long introduction out of the way, I'm going to finally get to discussing the specifics of the episode, which begin with Jake trying to reassure his housemates that he's the same old Jake as before. Same old Jake! Bimo is simply not having any of it. Ah! Pig in the crib! Ah! Although Bimo's always been fixated on visual appearance and has been greatly upset over far less before. <laughs> Hotcha! Bimo, how do I look? Like the devil! Finn is visibly perturbed by Jake's new form, but he is trying to be supportive when his brother insists nothing is wrong. Same old Jake, if you say so. It's obvious to Jake that Finn does see him differently, and the lack of reassurance by his family is beginning to weigh on him. Hmm. Jake tries to seek reassurance from others, and thinks he found some through Dirt Beer Guy. Well, I'm basically the same as before. The difference is only physical. But even DBG becomes weirded out and walks off when he realizes the blue dog monster he's been talking to is Jake. All this pressure and concern from his friends begins to get to Jake, and he begins to worry about how others perceive him, blaming his new blue color for the reason. Even ladies' powers can't cause Jake to remain yellow, however. His new form apparently has high magical resistance. Lady Rainicorn is completely supportive of her hubby, and it's so very, very cute. And I'd wager if she wasn't completely content with Jake no matter his form, Jake would have actually began to greatly worry about his appearance. The bond between the two lovers is just adorable, and allows Jake to not get stressed out. 
Jake has a visually interesting taco-infused dream where he finds his progenitor, first portrayed as a statue that is being worshipped, and I'm also very intrigued that there's a lot of skulls of this creature at the base of the statue, and I can't help but think this is an important detail. Maybe this creature is the last of its kind or something like that. The creature comes to life and infects Jake, obviously implying that it's responsible for his form. Then, Jake is strapped to an operating table, reminiscent of an alien abduction, where the mysterious creature turns bat-like. I'm going to assume this is another reference to Jake fearing vampires. This is similar imagery to the dream in Orb, where Jake's mother turned into the moon to represent danger and fear. Jake meets Germaine, so the two are sharing a dream like they have before, though Germaine's dream is much less abstract than Jake's. He's simply dreaming about painting the abstract art that he paints when he's awake. Jake's component of the dream has the monster turn into his father, and then Joshua takes on the characteristics of the monster. This signifies Joshua's involvement with Jake's origin. He was the one impregnated from the bite, after all. I'm not sure if the yo-yo walking the dog trick is meant to represent something, or if it's just silly randomness, but my bet is on the former. If I had to hazard a guess, actually walking a dog is controlling your leashed pet, which is in line with Joshua trying to control Jake by teaching him certain things and keeping other things secret. Joshua saying he can almost do the trick refers to him just barely failing to keep Jake from finding out the truth. At least, that's the only interpretation I can muster up at the moment. It's pretty astonishing that Jake actually knows what his progenitor looks like deep down, although he can't recall this outside the dream. After drawing an accurate representation, he remarks that it's... To squiggles. Perhaps somewhere deep down in his subconsciousness, at a level that's currently out of his reach, there's even more knowledge about the mysterious blue creature. Jake is worried about Jermaine's change, while Finn insists that it's probably fine. Finn is clearly more prone to being worried about external change, while Jake is more worried about internal change. It's an interesting contrast between the two characters. Jake sets out to find Jermaine, and after a quest where he meets the Jameses and a wall of water, he finds Jermaine's fancy residence, which Bryce also resides in. In case you don't recall, Bryce is a demon that used to have beef with Joshua, and Jermaine continued to keep him trapped in Joshua's former home. You're gonna miss that alarm one day, and I'm gonna eat you from the bottom up so you can watch me while I eat you. Then, in my triumph, I will retrieve the poster your dad stole from me. Last we saw of Bryce, him and Jermaine walked off together after Joshua's former home burned down. It's awesome that the two were able to overcome the past together and become friends and even business partners. Jake suspects Bryce of nefarious doings and is still adamant about defending his dad's honor. My dad told me all about your demon tricks. Well, now I don't want to say anything bad about your dad, but... Based on everything we've seen throughout the series, Joshua did love his boys very much, but he was a flawed character, and the beefs of his professional demon hunting life often became personal. Based on the relationship Jermaine and Bryce were able to cultivate, there were probably much better ways to handle demons than the methods Joshua employed and tried to push onto his children. I love how after Jermaine was able to stop living under his dad's shadow, he was able to find a life of contentment where he can pursue his interests and even befriend those who used to be his enemies. Trying to maintain his dad's life really did a number on Jermaine, and it's so awesome to see him grow as a person and find his own happiness. Jermaine is very caring and kind toward his brother, and the bonding the two shared was very touching. Also, dad told me you might go through some changes one day. Huh? He told me to be supportive, but I would have done that anyway. Such sweet words. I gotta mention that, yes, if you watch Steven Universe, it's hard not to hear Greg when Jermaine talks, as they do have the same voice actor. Jake is able to take Jermaine's words about change to heart, and realizes that people are constantly ever-changing beings that never truly remain the same. He overcomes his denial and fear of the unknown aspects of himself, and this mental change allows him to revert to his classic yellow form. It's interesting how Jake didn't even realize his appearance changed until Finn pointed it out and Jake looked in the mirror. Just goes to show how much he saw himself as regular old Jake. He feels comfortable in his skin, no matter what. Different yet the same. This episode ties in with a everything stays but still changes theme of stakes, and honestly the whole series, probably more than any other episode. While usually people grow from a long series of subtle changes that make a person more well-rounded and nuanced, people can still experience drastic shifts and character arcs, so to say. Sometimes a major life event can make you question who you are and what defines your identity. 
Recently, Princess Bubblegum had this happen to her, and her response was different from Jake's. She was demoralized about her lack of knowledge and her failure to tap into her potential. I've lived my whole life while having this talent I knew nothing about. Jake, on the other hand, was in denial about himself. There's some stuff about me that I've been ignoring for a long time. I'm afraid of that stuff. But it's part of who I am. It's an interesting contrast between the two characters who are dealing with a similar issue in their life. Honestly, I could probably ramble on and on about Abstract for ages because there's so much to talk about, especially when you start to bring in and reflect on your own life experiences. However, this review is already way longer than I anticipated, so I'll save that stuff for another day. My verdict is that Abstract was a beautiful and phenomenal episode of Adventure Time.